Listen, man, if you hear, just make sure you have watched that episode because there's going to be a ton of spoilers right now. So just get ready. If you ain't watched the episode, get up out of here. We're so excited to bring you the live show, our first ever. We're not ready yet. We're going to be counting down soon. It's coming soon, so just, you know, get ready. Get ready. But get make sure you go on socials. You yeah, share it. Up. Share it everywhere. Tell your share moms, the crew has friends, it. tell your friends, moms. Tell everybody, your aunties, aunt, your cousins, cousins. I ain't gonna lie, bro, it's been a minute since we've seen the boys on the screen. Bro, the... what's it been, a year and a half? Yeah, a year and a few months, boy. It's crazy. The boys is back now, though. Bro, how good was that episode? Bro, fire. I don't want to get into it yet. But we're finally back, and we're just happy you guys are here, and we're happy you're a part of this show. You know, obviously, if you're tuned into The Crew Has It, if this is your first time, welcome. We're going to be recapping for the next 10 weeks. Oh, yeah. um, if you're a returning... Fan, member, listener, whatever, thank you. We love you. Aww. We love you. We appreciate you. And make sure you check out our sponsors. You know, they keep the lights going. Make sure y'all tuned in. Go to the bathroom now so you don't miss anything. There's going to be so many surprise guests. Get your snacks. Get your drinks. Hit that like button. You know, throw a little comment in there, whatever. Do it for the algorithm. Yeah, help, help the boys out. Come get on. Get your boys on that front page, man. Did you tell your moms about this episode yet? Yeah, hit, hit, this, hit this link in the family group chat. Make sure you get it in there. Yo, Mike, are we about to count down? Are listen, we ready for the episode? About to start, baby. You better gear up. About to tune in, listen. Start the countdown now, Mike. Let's do it. Five, four, three, two, one. And now, a public service announcement. From our friends at Manscaped. So there's been a ton of advancements since the boys have been on with the Manscaped team. Yeah, now nah, they going crazy, bro. They upping it every time, every chance they get. So they got the Beard Hedger. They got the Weed Whacker 2.0. 2.0. Not only can you go down there, but you can go up here. You know what I'm saying? Not just below the waist, but you can get the face. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> The Beard Hedger Pro Kit is the ultimate package to craft how exactly you want to look with your beard, right? You know what I'm saying? A little chiseled and everything. Look all sexy. No patches, none of that. It's electric. It's cordless. It's tough on hair. It's waterproof. Is it? Waterproof. It has like 20 different lengths with one guard. So you only need like 50 guards in your drawers going Bro, crazy, I absolutely hate mess. when the drawer is everywhere and there's Bro, stuff all over. The, you, you don't got to do none of that. One guard, 20 lengths. Y'all know the deal. And y'all know how I feel about paying for shipping. So what could they do? They use the promo code CREW. You get 20% off. 20%. Free shipping. The boys is looking out. I mean, And it's shipping. the best. We only align with brands that we absolutely love and believe in. So help the boys out. Use the promo code CREW. 20% off free shipping at Manscaped. Please, use the code. Yeah, use the use code the HELP the more us. Use the code, the more we give y'all all this sexy, beautiful content. You know what I'm saying? Last one to the airport buys breakfast. Buy breakfast. Day one, day one. Boys, man, hold on though. We are live. Hold on though, we live. This is different. This is not nothing like we've done before. No. This is this is like live action. But we got a legend with us though, like like a real legend though. Like I don't think they really see who's on. Like I don't think they see. Listen, Michael, introduce him. Listen, man. introduce him. My big brother, someone who's been a huge help since I started on this, you know, this journey of Power Book Two Ghosts since season one. My big brother, he's been, you know, just making sure I'm staying right. I'm in the pocket. Every time. <laughs> so shout out to my big brother, man. We got Lorenz Tate. Lorenz man. Tate is in the, in the building. building. man. I can't believe you're here, honestly. Listen, I'm happy that I'm finally here. I know we've been trying to make this happen, but what a beautiful time. It's so timely. We had to, you know, watch party for season three. Yes, sir. I'm proud of both of you and G. Y'all doing y'all thing, man. Yes, I love the fact that you guys are, you know, taking what you've done on screen to a whole nother level in your personal lives. Uh, y'all are tight, y'all are brothers. The brotherhood is amazing. We was yeah. just uh, talking and seeing just that camaraderie that you both have mm -hmm. um, is just real. And I love to, to see that you, you know, continuously growing. Um, both of y'all elevating y'all game on screen. But to see what y'all doing on the crew has it, man. <laughs> oh, I got I to gotta come right. Clip that. Yeah, yeah, Clip that. Yeah, Clip yeah. that. Yeah. Get right with y'all. Thank it's you so great. much for coming on. We've been dying to have you on. Yes. You're... A legend. Oh, your work you. speaks for, your, for itself. Everything. Icon. From power, from 
everything you've done. Wow. And so, so let's start from the beginning. Before yeah. we get into the episode, I kind of want to, you know, because we got, we got Lorenz in here. I kind of yeah. want to talk to him a little bit. Let's do it. So, like, what was, what was day one acting for Lorenz Tate? Like, yeah, what is oh, dry? Wow. Yeah, what, what's so I'll that? take, I'll, I'll try to make this, this long story short. It's, uh, uh, it's, it always is way longer than, you know? <laughs> so, it's like, so, so check it out. So um, my brothers and I are originally, originally from Chicago. And back in the 80s, right. this is before y'all was even thought of, but yes. my mother and father um, moved us to Los Angeles. I was about 10 when I first got my first acting role. Nice. It, was, uh, <laughs> it was the uh, remake of The Twilight Zone. Oh, but nice. here's the deal. It is not the original Twilight Zone. I ain't that damn old. <laughs> <laughs> even though people think that I am. So the not original, the one from the 60s. Yeah, not one from the 60s. <laughs> they remade it in the 80s. And um, it was back in 1985. I was about 10 years old. And uh, my, uh, the, the line of, the, of my character, um, I'll kind of set it up. I was a kid waiting to see Santa Claus in this Christmas uh, episode. Nice. But the Santa Claus was drunk. And my line was, before I walked up, because he's falling all over the place, I think Santa's wasted. <laughs> that was my first line. That was the first time that I was uh, paid as a professional actor. Did you audition for this? Of course. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah, for that one yeah. line. Man. I thought I was... Lorenz Tate was off her only from day one. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I had Listen, to, man, you know, you got to start, you got to start somewhere. Yeah, yeah, start somewhere, man, yeah, and um, somewhere. I definitely felt like I, you know, earned my, my you know, my place in, in the industry by, you know, uh, yeah. auditioning. You know, I was able to see so many people along the way. Right. I was never the main character right. in most of the projects that I was doing. It was TV, um, but I was the kid that was always watching. And it was a really great thing for me to see that because I was able to see what to do and what not to do. Right. You know, I would see a lot of people, you know, go off to become very successful. And then I also saw people hit the self-destruction button. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I don't want to do that. And my mother and father always said, listen, what you're doing in this industry is a privilege. Right. So if you love what you're doing, which I did, they said, run the, the, the marathon and not we the still sprint. Do. Right. We still right? do. <laughs> I still love it. And still they do. said, run the, the marathon. And for me, I've always kept that, right? Running a marathon, finding the ways to... Uh, find projects that, you know, inspire me or things that uh, challenge me, right? right? And so I was able to get my first feature film at 17 years old in the Hughes Brothers Minister Society. Ooh, wow. Hughes Brothers directed an incredible Wow. Film. I, we need I, a round of applause I, for I, Menace to Society. <laughs> hey. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, really? so Menace was my first film. Uh, from there, you know, obviously it, I play old dog, right? right? <laughs> old the, the, dog, we got old, man. old we got dog, dog, man. Yeah. So, so from there, um, I was able to go to a, a, a little movie called The Inkwell, which I'm happy I did because I wanted to show my range. Right. From there, Dead Presidents, which we shot here in New York City, and I love that. On that film, I felt like I became a man. I right. became an adult in a real way. Um, I just love the storyline, and I was away from my family, away from, you know, everybody. And right. I really Old just, yeah, I just really be able to, you know, to hold my own. Right. And then I went on to movies like Love Jones and Why Iconic, Do Fools Fall right. in Love and uh, a whole bunch of other things in between. I'm tr truly grateful for the journey. I'm truly grateful for all of the life experiences that right. I was able to, you know, attain over the years. And, you know, now I'm I'm doing something that is, uh, I believe, equally as special as some of the movies that we just mentioned um, in the power universe and working on Ghost right. and, you know, playing <laughs> Councilman Tate, man. It's so like, so it's before, like before we get there, we're almost okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. I have a question. So, so when you did Menace, did you pop immediately? Like, like, was it instant, like, you were getting offers, you were in everything, or was it still kind of like... You know, oddly enough, it was not that easy for me, you know, because I think people in the industry thought that when they saw that film, they thought I was really yeah, it did. old dog, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like, they I don't... I can relate, my brother, I can relate. <laughs> right? like, they really, they did, like, much like what you all do. Sometimes it's so convincing that right. they didn't, you know, distinguish, they couldn't yeah, they couldn't my, me from the actual character. So it was a, it was a slow process, but right. I still had to go and grind. I still had to go and audition. All those movies I made mention of, I had to audition for those. Right. There weren't any offers. Mm. Offers didn't really come uh, into play until I got to, like... Um, Love Jones and Why Do Fools Fall in Love because I had been doing so much. And for me, I just wanted to continue to work and grind. So right. I wasn't really, I, I had the blinders on. I right. didn't get caught up in the, the fast life. As we know, in, in our industry, we can easily get caught up in the fast life because yeah. there's a lot of things that are going. There's a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. But I just kind of just 
put the blinders on and stay focused on the work. And um, again, like it's, it's been great. All those life experiences and the journeys have, you know, made me who, who I am today. Right. So speaking of challenges, like being that you was on Dead Presidents New York, you was here by yourself. Yeah. Would you say that was one of the most challenging like projects that you that you filmed? Yeah, it was definitely because, you know, I had to sort of teleport mm. back to the, you know, 60s and the 70s because it was a movie about the Vietnam experience, you know, black men uh, and black folks who you know, fought for a country and put their lives on the line and in and, and, and Vietnam and in the war, when they came back home, they didn't feel like they were, you know, celebrated and didn't have... an appreciated. Right, wasn't appreciated and didn't have some of the things that they felt that they needed right. to either survive and live and really have a part of that American dream. And so, you know, they had a scheme to uh, create a heist for uh, and rob an armored truck that was going to burn the money. Right. They, you know, the government burns money every year, and they were like, wait, hold up. <laughs> They're not burning We ain't burning that us. bread when we need <laughs> that. So, so, yeah, so, and it was loosely based off of, 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 of some true stories. But for me, that was something that was really important as I, you know, was here and just trying to really immerse myself into what that experience was like. Right. I was able to talk to as many people as I could who had the Vietnam experience and just feeling that, you know, marginalization as a, as a, as a young black man in, in trying to find his way right. and myself finding my way, it really was a parallel in, in, a, in a lot of ways, maybe not to the degree what they were dealing with, mm -hmm. but just trying to find myself as a, as a young man and growing up. Um, and it definitely was was challenging just to be able to grasp that, but I had the support of uh, everybody around me, and you know I think we made a classic movie at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. Okay, so so all the stuff's happening. Mm -hmm. When does the call come in for power? Is it an audition? Is it a straight offer? Does right. CK go, oh dog, please no audition, come, man. right? Please right, come right, play right, no audition, man. So it, it was written for you. So I so no here's, audition, a, here's man. a real story. I'm gonna be honest. Right. So. Amari Hardwick, who plays the infamous ghost, yep. James St. Patrick, Shout out is, is a real dear friend of mine. Right. And he is a huge reason as to why I'm even a part of this. Uh, along with, obviously, Courtney Kemp. Courtney Kemp made it happen. Courtney Kemp made it, you know, right. she manifests this thing for me, right? And obviously, 50 Cent amplified it right you know so shout out to you know all of those people who were supportive as, as well as mark canton and yep. that support mark. but here's here's what's interesting i was originally casted as an offer to play terry silver yes a lot of people don't know what? that so have you said yes, this before yes i've said this before i didn't even know that yeah so i was wait where did you say this so, it's so, exclusive he didn't so, say no, this no, 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 it's exclusive. First, this, so so here's I heard it this first. how it works so I heard it here first. we were just trying to figure out what would be the best way for me to come in because you know i've been i've been talking to courtney i've been talking to 50 right and obviously omari is is my brother so we were just trying to figure out what that was going to be and the opportunity to play the um lawyer who was going to defend uh, ghosts when he's locked up, right. then eventually has a relationship with Tasha, right. you know, Tariq's mom. Right. That's so we were like, okay, it was cool. I'll get a chance to play, you know, Notori. We'll have a good time. We were able to play opposite her. But I was working on another project, and it just wasn't coming together. I right. couldn't do it, the timing. And you know how the power, yeah. when they, when it's time to go, they go. They, they go. Wait. They don't they care who you are. Right. They don't give, they'll, they'll stop for nothing. People don't realize how much that comes into play. Like, why did this character do this or this or that? It's like, scheduling. it's a lot of scheduling that people don't realize, like, as actors. It's a big show. There's a lot of great characters. Right. There's so many moving parts. A lot going and if, on. And, and when the sort of the planets line up on this show, you have to be... And a line. Right. You, you, yeah, you got to be ready. So that didn't happen. Exactly. But here's what I did. I, I, I was telling Amari and everybody, like, listen, I really want to be a part of the show. So I reached out to Courtney, and I was like, listen, Courtney, this this is not – this is the agents aren't involved with this phone call. Hey. The managers, nobody's involved. Can you keep that 10, 10%? Yeah. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that business later. <laughs> you know, so I have to bring some of myself to Rashad, <laughs> true businessman. But I did tell her, I said, listen, whatever you need me to do, I want to come on to the show – I'll do an episode. I love you, sis. I love what this show means. Right. I love what it means to the culture, right. to us. We're elevated, and I want to be a part of that. And so she says, you know, we're working on this character right now, season four. And it's not just one episode. It's four. Oh, nice. I was like, I bet sign me up. 
And she says, on top of it, I think I'm going to name the character Tate. He's a politician. He's charismatic. He's charming. But he's kind of got this this slick side to him. Right. Mm. I said, well, I'm in. Of course, the agents and managers like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why, why are you making deals? And I'm like, slow down. Slow, slow down. Pipe, pipe. Right, right, down. Right, right, All right. right First right. and foremost, I don't need permission to communicate to people that I want to work with. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that sort of mm-hmm. panned itself out, and right. I dictated what I was going to do right. in regards to my own team. Yeah. I, I, the buck stops with me. I make the final decision, yeah. right? Ah, it it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's getting so real compliment it was, here. It was, it was, but that's a true story. <laughs> so we went on, and we were, they, were, they brought me back for season five. Uh-huh. I loved just working with everyone. Power was just a, a phenomenon, mm-hmm. and it was something that I felt was really special to the culture, and I wanted to be a part of it. And I was happy... Just to do the four right. episodes. We go into season five. I'm just waiting for the councilman to get killed off because I know how it works. <laughs> right, right, right. And it just continued to go on. Season six, the spinoffs. And, of course, we just talked about more. And the ride has been amazing. Right. And then for me to show up in Ghost, right, Insane. to rock with y'all, I'm like, it's a whole new family. Yeah. And I love the original Power family. But you all embrace me. You know, um, I didn't want to come in stepping on any toes. I wanted to come in, do what I needed to do, lead by example in, in my own way. But you guys were already clicking. Y'all have already had the, the pulse of it, man. And I just want to, you know. And you just made it in. better. You well, thank you, better, man. You know? So it's been, it's been amazing. You don't even understand how much you inspire all of us when you come. Even when you just come to set, bro. Like, even when we just see you in the table, this is like, <laughs> damn. Like, we're really sharing all of this with Lorenz. Take A right thousand now. percent. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Mike. This isn't a spoiler, but we we did work together this season. So yes, that was that fun. was it was one of it, it was just so special to like be there with you. I was like, and then obviously we kind of got to know each other. But of like course. that first day, I was like, damn, no, it was amazing, Lorenz. man. You you both are really talented, and for me, I'm always learning. So I learn from you all. I'm inspired by what you all do and how you all approach the work Thank and you. the work that you all do. It feels real. Every time I see what y'all do, I know that y'all believe what y'all saying and what y'all doing. Yeah, so the people way, who are watching it believe it as well. And that's what it really is about, right? right? And so I'm always open to, like, you know, seeing what the new, you know, class, if you will, right. are doing. And y'all are doing a phenomenal job. So I'm always inspired and motivated about what y'all are doing. So so thank you for, for embracing me and... Um, you know, shout out to all of our creators and creatives who are part of our show. There's a lot of people who don't understand how the crew, and the I'm crew so happy that you like the crew has it. It's the crew, the crew has really it, yep. works tirelessly. Hard. They get at, there before us yes, and leave they, after. Man, they, they and so shout out to the entire you know power universe and the crews. Thank you f- to all of the creators and all of our actors and actresses. Yep. Really, really fine performers on the show, and I'm just happy to be around greatness. Man, we happy to be around you. <laughs> <laughs> we happy to be around you, uh, Lorenz man, Tate. Thank you so Bringing much for coming to with energy, the boys man. for a little bit. You yes, know, yes. we want to get you on a full episode. We get the whole hour uh, in, but we just we had you in town. So listen, I'm I'm definitely you hear from me first. I'm definitely gonna come back and sit with y'all oh, so we yeah. can really chop it up. And you know, I'll be able to ask some of the questions. I just want to hang out with y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's so funny. Every time I see you out of work, you're just like, man, you and Michael are tearing it up. Huh? <laughs> I'm like, and I'm, I'm like, yo, like, I'm, like, I'm like, look at these young boys. I said, I said, what, what is that like? I live vicariously through y'all. You know, we gotta we gotta hang out. Y'all gotta take me uh you know around town and listen man show we, me what y'all listen man y'all up to we got some plans this weekend all right let's do let's do it <laughs> I'm, in. I'm in thank but you I definitely so much come back and see y'all man thank you so much for love, love. We appreciate right, love it. Bro. thank you for coming on love little bro love you bro you already know love you. yes sir yes sir let's keep it going all right dave do we got mark canton oh wow money mark wow money mark hold on wow money mark the mic to the boss. <laughs> okay, councilman. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So we need to introduce Mark Canton. You've heard his name on every single Literally. episode. Everyone that comes on talks about Mark Canton. Mark Canton, you can finally put the face yeah, see Money to the Mark, name. man. Money Mark Canton. This is Money Mark. I call him Money Mark. He's Mark Canton, but I call him Money Mark. It's- I- I can finally put the face to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Whoa, so, that's me. <laughs> so Mark Ken is the executive producer of all the power shows. Um, he was, uh, you know, juggernaut in the business. He he was uh, he started at Warner Brothers. He was right. the head of chairman of production. Head of 
President. Right, right. president of right. Warner Brothers. Was right. Then he went on over to Columbia Pictures. Chairman. Chairman. <laughs> chairman. Don't chairman. forget the chairman. Chairman. And then you went over to, to Sony. You were at Sony? Or that was it's at part Sony. of Sony. Right. And then I formed my own uh, business. Right. And um, have had this incredibly blessed producing career. We started, um, I think my second movie was 300, and it sort of all went from there and ended up right here, right now. He made First 300 movie. mil on that movie, that's for sure. <laughs> First movie. Okay, okay, so, so how did, um, how did the, the Power Universe start? Like, like, what was day one conversation? Well, I know you had, I know you, had, you, first of all, it's great to be with you both. Of course. It's a proud night in a proud universe. Oh, yeah. Um, particularly tonight, just the fact that we got this done. <laughs> right, 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 right. And to the one friend and the one family that's allowed, we're happy you're here. Shout out to all my cousins. You know what I'm saying? It's been kind of a glorious week, the way we kicked <laughs> off this Go Season 3, Brett Mahoney, everybody involved, this in really illustrious cast and crew, and... For those of you who experienced tonight, what's coming is really exceptional. And we're already, like, almost halfway through season four. Right. So, I mean, it's, it's unstoppable. Right. And um, I just want to acknowledge again, Brett, who came aboard, you know, when Courtney passed the baton. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, uh, we're really breaking new ground. Right. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you, Mark. For everything you are and all you do. Thank you so much, Mark. Yes, yeah. we so we started. Green. Right, we started. Right. No, we're here. But quite seriously, listen, Michael. I know since he was little Mike. Right. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> now everyone wants to be like Mike. <laughs> but um, it's um, uh, we started with an idea. Right. And it really was in a meeting in my office that was an idea that was based upon a thought from an experience that I had in my own life, thinking that guys, usually if they ever mature, <laughs> they get there a little later than women, right? right? right. So mm -hmm. you two understand that better than most. Okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we know oh, we know, Mark. Yeah, we know. Yeah, we so basically, um, my theory was that guys in their late 30s who are su successful, mm -hmm. you either make a turn in one direction or another. You right. either get your shit together or you're going to go Everything get stuck forward. in life, right. go backwards. So it was an idea that then became like, well, what if the guy was really great at being really bad right? and everybody was riding his coattail, so why would anyone want to want him to change right mm -hmm. so that was the legitimate club for thing for ghost omari that happened and i met only a couple of writers you know and courtney was like the second person we met and of course within no time she had figured out the entire shakespearean tale everything that you need to figure out as an elite thinker and writer an Look exceptional back. person. So she had it Genius. down. And I had known 50 before, mainly because I wanted to. Because who, <laughs> right. because who didn't? And who don't? Right. He's the man. Right. He's, He's the man, man. So um, basically, I had, we met with Courtney, 50, and I had a meeting in L.A. I literally hardly got the words out of my mouth. And he goes, I have enormous respect for what you've done. Whatever you want to do, I want to do. And then Courtney and 50 took this germ of an, an idea and everything evolved from then. And it's 11 or 12 years later now. Yeah, and their shows and... Shows, <laughs> series, they connect. You guys have friendships. Makai's here tonight. Yep. You Come have... On, Shout out Makai Curtis. So Shout Raising out. Raising Canaan. So you have the connection... But the amazing thing about the power universe, it's all connected, but each series is so definitive onto itself. Right. They stand alone, and then they all come together. Mm -hmm. And believe me, from having been fortunate enough in the movie business to spearhead and develop and make some franchises, doing that onto itself, like Ghost, is hard enough. But when you think about six seasons of power, 60 three hours so imagine that's like 
three Scorsese films. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 63 hours of, of one that then led into Ghost. Right. With a left turn for Raising Canaan, a right mm -hmm. turn for Force, mm -hmm. and Joe, who I always got to shout out. Right. He's another one of the men. Shout out man. Uncle Joe, man. Shout out yeah, shout out Joe. Joe. Shout out to Joe, always. And we had dinner, I think, last Saturday, and he's um, an unbelievable actor. Yeah. And an even better person. Right, 100%. So, basically, the thing that's unprecedented here is, I, I would say a couple of things. The cultural impact, number one, that you gents and all your partners in the series from you know all areas have really uh, impacted our culture our society 100%. it's authentic right and fun and dramatic all at once everything <laughs> and it's but it makes people lean into it mm -hmm. and then Gets i think invested. the other part of it that's exceptional is just the fact that all of this at some point really does have all the pieces have a connect. Right. Yeah. And there's a lot of love and passion and a lot of talk everywhere on the you know, social media, the internet, everywhere you go, there's talk about ghosts, about the universe, all of it. But Force, Raising Cain and everything. The thing that I have said from day one on Ghost is that since Ghost was the natural extension right. of power. In a way, I feel like that's been the carry-on for 10 years. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of storytelling. But if you, when people see the end of episode one mm -hmm. of season three tonight. Crazy. It's crazy. It's so crazy. Insane. I have a friend in the business who refers to things as just not even the beginning, just the beginning of the beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how I feel about what you all are doing. Just the beginning. Listen. This is our executive talking. This is the beginning of the beginning. <laughs> this Who is knows what's coming. So we ain't going nowhere. Right. By we the ain't way, going nowhere. And Lorenz had to get off for me, but I don't get to get off for nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I actually have one more question. So um, when they told you Tariq was going to be the spinoff, what was your for initial reaction to it? Were you, were you like, oh, I don't know, like he's a hated character, or were you just full for it? You know, the truth is I was definitely that no. I knew that Tariq which is now happening, right. it's a great question. I sensed that the, the impact of the end of power right. and the what's next really lied in the heart and soul of the direction that Tariq would be heading in. Right. And season three is really schools out, okay? Mm. You they know, have can no rock idea and roll what's all coming. day, as Kiss says, and party all night, but school's out. They have no idea what's coming. They have no idea what's coming, but the maturity of Tariq, your maturity, um, your character, the, the fact that, that we're going to now experience that time that young people do, all right. the characters, which is between being too young to be an adult right. and... And, and not quite old enough to be f a fully formed adult is right. really where this show is at this right. year. And the adults in the show who are coming down, the right. cops, everyone else, the bad, the, 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 all the, the, the baddies. Right, 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 right. Oh, the baddies. I almost forgot. <laughs> Look, we've got baddies coming tomorrow. Not today, Mark. Fuck so it up the baddies come tomorrow. <laughs> but um, it's pretty uh, awesome yeah. and, and exciting. I'm also... You know, when, you, when I see the inspiration for you to, to figure out the other parts, like this podcast you're right, doing, right? it's great because we live in a world, a creative world, where it's good not to just be stuck Gotta keep with it. one part of the journey, mm -hmm. especially now. And I'm glad that everyone has afforded you both the opportunity, but you're also affording everyone else the opportunity from your talents. So I'm happy to be Damn. a part of the ride. Thank you so much, Mark. You have no idea how much this means to me. This we is really like... He's, he's like, like... This is the OG. This is the big homie right here. I love you, Mark. You got questions about anything that's going on on set, anything that's going on behind the scenes, up there, wherever. 
We talked to Mark. Yeah. So so we're gonna we're gonna have a full episode with Mark. Oh, we um, have, yeah. And we're gonna get into I got, everything. I got the season one hoodie and everything. Yeah. So, oh yeah. So nah, yeah he's not playing around. Show, oh yes. But everything. Like, yeah. We bring you on for like the. You gotta wear it. I, I need the season three one now. Oh yeah. Or it's season two for you guys. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Season, right. Yeah, season two. Well, where we got you. Whatever we have to. Mark so. Kenton, the man. The thank you so goat. much for coming on, buddy. Mark. Mark. Thank you all. And now, who am I passing the baton? We love you, Mark. Who? Listen, oh, okay. listen, listen, if y'all going to if y'all going to show love to Mark on my behalf, just make sure y'all call him Money Mark. Money Mark. <laughs> I, don't call him Mark. I call him Money Mark. All right, we gotta pay the bills. We gotta pay the bills. So <laughs> Money Mark taught us that. So we're gonna get a quick yeah. ad and then we got Money Mark. We're gonna get into bills, the episode. You guys gotta pay your own bills. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get into the episode after this. Do not go anywhere. Don't go nowhere. Don't go nowhere. We're gonna chop it up with you. Like search for something online that you like, you know, you ain't really want nobody to know about or anything like that. Gonna kind of keep it low key and stuff. No, never. <laughs> so you don't like use incognito mode, none of that. Like, well, yeah, I use incognito mode but, if I'm ever like browsing. Yeah, but listen, incognito mode is shiz whack. Listen, wait, it doesn't work? No, it don't work. Oh shit! Listen, your internet service provider, they still see every single website you visited. Incognito mode or not? That's why even when I'm at the crib, I don't go online without using ExpressVPN. Well, they really can see everything. Everything, bro. From the first day you opened your. Your browser, they know everything. I'm telling you. But not with ExpressVPN, though. Wait, so you mean to tell me that my internet provider knows everything I look up if I don't have ExpressVPN? Yeah. Everything. They know. <laughs> they know. They know it all. Listen, these internet service providers, bro, they can sell your information legally to ad companies. Mm. Legally. Yep, that does explain a lot of the ads that I do get. <laughs> ExpressVPN, they reroute your internet connection through their secure service so nobody can see anything that you're searching up. Oh my God, I need this. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. They got the most powerful encryption services. They encrypt 100% of your information, all your data, so nothing is out there. Nobody can go fishing for your shit. How did I not know about this until now? Listen, that's why I'm your boy. I put you on to all the good stuff, you know? It's so seamless, bro. I don't even realize that I have ExpressVPN activated sometimes. Oh, so it doesn't slow down anything? Or Nothing. You really it just don't even know? It smoothly in the background. It's like it's not even there. So why would anyone not get this? Listen, there's no excuse to not be using this now. You can put it on your phone, your little iPad, your computer, your TV, anything. Damn. So you better have this on everything. Oh, I'm, I'm doing it. I got to do it right now. All right, we'll give you your phone. All right, my bad. <laughs> we got an exclusive link for everyone to use. So it's expressvpn.com slash crew pod. That's express, E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N dot com slash crew pod, C-R-E-W-P-O-D. Have you ever been to an online store, put everything in the cart, and then abandon it because you're like, wait, what? $15 shipping, $20 shipping? You end up paying more shipping than you paying for your product? It's ridiculous. I absolutely love... Our next sponsor is called ShipStation. If you have, you know, your own merch, your own business at home. Any type of drop shipping, whatever you're doing, ShipStation got you covered. Using ShipStation is beautiful because you can lower your shipping costs, mm -hmm. keep your customers happy, yep. and you make your returns easier. Listen, right now you can get a free trial and a quick setup. All you got to do is use the promo code THECREW at ShipStation.com. And you want to start your 60-day trial. ShipStation effortly integrates into all the places you use online. Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage every single order from one simple dashboard. Automate routine shipping tasks. Print shipping labels. And automate delivery notifications to your customers. It's all about growth. Grow your business all year long with ShipStation. Use the promo code THECREW at ShipStation.com for your free 60-day trial. 60 days, baby. Free 60 days. Go do it. And if I haven't Look said cool. anything to get me canceled yet, <laughs> back to the episode. Oh, yeah, we back. Are we back? Oh, yeah, we back. Look at, oh, hold on. Hold on. Alex, look at yourself. Look at yourself. Make sure you're looking good. Yeah, She's fix hot. Breath, fix up. Absolutely. Listen, if y'all enjoying... Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, if y'all enjoying this, make sure y'all hit the like. Make sure y'all subscribe. Because the boys is coming. But look, what we got here with us right now? So, we're going to introduce... We're going to formally introduce... Our this new boss man right here. Our new boss man, showrunner, Brett Mahoney. Oh, Brett Mahoney in the mm. building. Yes. Man, we happy to have yeah. you. And his shoes are yeah. fire, may I say. Yeah, the shoes school? are crazy. Thank you, thank you. Brett oh, is yeah, those are fire. I didn't even see them. I to catch up with you guys. What's those? What's that? The Dolce & Gabbana? Dolce & Gabbana. Ooh. Wow. Wow. You know something light on a Friday night. And, different. and then different. now, so now we got, oh, uh, yeah, just make sure we, yeah, there you go. They want to oh, hear yeah. you, Brett. He's Absolutely. a brilliant writer, but we want to hear him too. Yeah. Um, we're going to head on over to... You guys are familiar with Alex. 
She's our most watched episode. Wow. Yeah. Alex Lapree yeah. is in the building. We had to bring out the big dogs for this one. Yeah, listen, we got to bring them out. You know, you know her as it. Effie. Let's get into the I'm tea, y'all. Oh. my boots right now. Like, yeah. Look how pretty. I'm yeah. in my boots. I got to get out of here, y'all. I, I can't be Whoa, here. whoa, whoa. I'm not going to be in the middle of this. <laughs> I'm not doing this again. I'm not third go. wheeling again. I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So, so let's get into the episode. I know you guys are dying to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So, Brett, yes. I, my first question is, where did Noma come yes, from? Because that's she all is insane. insane. <laughs> so, wait. First of all, I have yeah. a question. Do yeah. you? Would you go as far as to say that she is one of the baddest bitches that Power has ever created? I hope so. We want her to be one of the baddest By bitches far. that Power I think so. created. Yeah. By far. And we felt we, I that. we felt we needed that in season three right. to really drive you guys and create pressure mm-hmm. on you and, you know, to create danger in the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, she's dangerous. She's so, yeah. dangerous. She's dangerous. so inspiring. That yeah. opening scene cuts the hand no, off. Yeah. She, she didn't even have to do all that. She could have just hit the ring finger. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Did you write that, Brett? Was well, that we you? had a debate about whether <laughs> she should cut that hand off herself mm-hmm. or should she ha- have had one of the goons do it. Right. She had to. But we yeah. felt she was bad enough that she should do she it herself. Had to. Rightfully yeah. so. See, this is the stuff that I want to know and the fans yeah. want to know. Like, interesting yeah. stuff like that. It's like Easter egg type shit. Yeah. Right. That was a debate. Mm-hmm. Right. I like that decision, mm-hmm. though. To make, her make, to make her cut the shit off. Absolutely. Could've, Very nice. Couldn't have went no other way. And that was mm-hmm. Central Park. It was beautiful. It was night. It was cold when we shot that. Yeah. But it was so beautiful. And we like just a wanted a really strong in intro for her. Right. Yeah. And, okay. And you guys did it. Yeah. So in regards to her and Obi, right? So I know that their relationship is it's kind of weird because he's her soldier, right? Yep. And yep. he does as he's told and things as, as so. But in some ways... I kind of just because I caught a little few of those looks that he was throwing her way, <laughs> right? And it kind of seemed like, is there a little something romantic here? Like, how is he feeling? He's looking like he's looking at her. I know those eyes. Well, I you, know those eyes. Obi wants a little bit more because he feels, you know, her man Mecca, right? Mm-hmm. Murdered last season. Shout out Daniel Sanjata. That's my yeah, boy. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Daniel yeah. Sanjata. Yeah. Tariq was there when he was murdered. Mm-hmm. I didn't do it though. So. You didn't do it. But um, Obi wants to step in. He wants to step up and step in. Mm. We'll see if that happens. Mm-hmm. I, I absolutely love Kyle, too, who plays He's Obi. The man, bro. He's incredible. Like... He's the man. His work all season is insane. I love him. And as, soon as, ta- he, as soon as he comes up on the screen, his presence Badass. is felt. And his presence is felt. Mm-hmm. Kyle Vinciteri, who plays Obi, literally, we cast him the day before he shot. Right, wait, wait, wasn't there like a change no or what? Way. Yeah, like we had, it was like a COVID emergency. Right. And we turned to him and asked him if he could do it. Wow. He got on a plane without even the deal being closed and came in and shot like the next day. Kyle's the man. Yeah. And he just Everything. owned that character. So, so when job. he was written, was he written um, like, that was that accent written or what did he bring that? No, that accent was written and uh-huh. he auditioned with and without it. Nice. And we wanted it. We wanted to have that sort of like Nigerian f- uh, flair in right. the show. We wanted to bring something new. It brings so much. It elevates much- it. Yeah. It makes it's it worldwide. So Anybody right. can watch it. So many different groups of people yeah. can relate to this. Right. Yeah. I mean, we got the UK. Right. We got, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And it's just like. We feel worldwide. I love it. Yeah, I, I, we wanted that international. Right. Yeah, we wanted that international. Feel. I'm thinking so much of how many times I heard him say "so cross, so cross," <laughs> like because like, we did that scene so, so many cross. times, yeah. oh. and I just remember just being so cross. I was so confident. But, but from day one, from the table read, when I saw Noma and Obi together, I was like. The, I even texted Michael. Yeah, yeah. Text a little because bit during the table read. The, time, right? the whole table read. And I'm like, this season feels different. Like, mm. like they brought it. So mm. I'm just so excited for the people to see what they bring this yeah. year. Oh, yeah. 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 Noma was a great idea. Right. <laughs> great right. idea. Okay, so. We love Noma. So Noma, then. Even though she's trying to kill my ass. Right. She, like, she, goes, she already bugging. <laughs> so, so we get into Tariq, and he is moving his stuff out of Stansfield. Yeah. So you lost your room. Because your boy, campus drug dealer, he was involved in it. You held it down, though. Right. Held it down. I held it down. I had, Bro, I got so much love from that. I just got to thank Courtney and Brett. Like, <laughs> oh, I am so. From that scene when you came into the courtroom? When yeah, I yeah. came into the courtroom, it, that changed my life. Really? You don't even know how many people thought Brady was going to snitch. You have no idea. Oh, every time we walk into the club, that's the first thing that everyone says to me. They're like, oh, you didn't snitch, my boy. And I'm like, I did it, man. I, like, <laughs> like, I did it. I'm like, yeah, I did it. I held strong. <laughs> it's because you guys are brothers. Right. Yeah. And then we extend the family. This is, so this season is about 
you guys stepping up, becoming older, and then creating your own family. You know how you mm-hmm. go to college and you sort of separate from, from the, your, real your real family, from yeah. your genetic family, and you create the family of your own. And that's what you guys are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. But you're keeping secrets. Right. You well, motherfuckers, listen, man. Would it be power without secrets? It would not. It would but not. See, here's the thing. I always say this. I, I'll, like, go to the writers and I'll just be like, guys, can we just do one episode where there's just... The drug deal went well. <laughs> no one died. It, we, we dropped the Tariq drug deal. Tariq didn't lie to no Tariq yeah. was honest. Exactly. No one slept with anyone's boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> Everything was just good. Yeah. Nobody went behind nobody back to show no right. product. But who would watch that? Who would watch nobody. that? Right. Nobody. Watch that. So sometimes, conflict, you know, baby. we see the Brayden and Tariq conflict a lot. And yeah. mm-hmm. even sometimes I'm like, damn, I wish, but... That's, that's like brothers love. do. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Would we really be brothers if we was okay on everything? Exactly. <laughs> right. right. I don't think right. so. Right. Right, right. So, we with that yes man shit. You know? But so, when those secrets come out. Right. Mm-hmm. That's the fun stuff. Yeah. There's a lot of secrets that come out this season that I literally cannot wait until these episodes come out because we can talk about it. But there are so many secrets that come to light this season and it's just beautiful television. Absolutely. So it's a lot of fun. Let's get into Woody McLean. So we have Kane. Oh. Woody amazing. Right. So we have Kane Tejada and we see him throwing like a party. how he tried to take my shorty, bro. Like, <laughs> like, roll up in a Range Rover, like yeah. he's looking like I gotta give me a, like a track coat or something. Yeah. He's looking like I gotta give me a different type of truck. Bro, he makes me laugh so much. He's so good. Um, so, so what's kind of Woody's arc this ep- this episode? Like, what what was your intention with what you wanted to do with the Kane character? Well, it's actually similar to a lot of the characters in terms of a coming of age as people get older and they bump up against their authority figures. Right. Mm-hmm. So for Kane it's him bumping up against Monet. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and Lorenzo, mm-hmm. uh, his dad. So it's how long can he stay like the dutiful son versus becoming a man of his own? Right. 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 And that's kind of his arc, you know, this season of like fighting that and kind of like, you know, navigating the world with, with Monet yeah. as his mother, which is crazy. And you know what's so crazy is like when I was I was live streaming earlier at here, yeah. and um, Lavelle was saying something like, majority of the people that have a hard shell, they rarely have a hard interior. Right. And mm. it made so much sense because the first thing that came to my a mind soft was, interior. was yeah, they yeah. well they, they rarely, rarely yeah. they rarely have a hard interior. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. People with a hard exterior rarely have a hard right. interior. Right, right. It's soft. Yeah. But the first thing that came to my mind was Kane because like he's so hard on the outside. Mm-hmm. But, like, you yeah. know, his, his soft interior hasn't been shown. Right. But you can tell that it's there with the little nuances that he does. Mm-hmm. Like, the little the actions that he takes. Yeah. And the right. little, yes, yes, yeah. the, yes. The, mm-hmm. Totally. Agree. Like, that, that, totally that famous agree. meme where he's looking at Tariq, like, <laughs> when, he's, when he's above him at the, at the basketball game. Mm-hmm. And even, yeah. like, some of the points where Monet is, like, hardcore turning on him. Right. And it's on the <laughs> eyes. Like, I don't know. Woody does something that's, like, I can't even explain it. It's kind of like... When he's mad, his eyes completely turn black. Like, mm-hmm. when Kane is mad, like, his mm-hmm. eyes legit turn. It's right. the scariest thing ever. Yeah. And, um... I gotta learn that. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but so, like, and it's something, too, that when Monet turns on him, his eyes, like, even if he's not saying it... Right. There's this sorrow and, like, mm-hmm. almost, like, a form of betrayal that's yeah. shown. And it just kind of makes you see right through that, like, hard exterior that right. he's... Totally, absolutely. And, and even in that, he's so effortlessly funny... Like mm-hmm. I was dying oh, that so, <laughs> you know, I, in my, I've never met someone like Woody in my entire life. <laughs> the best. His sense of humor is, right. I can't even call it dry. Right. I can't call it sarcastic. I don't know what you call it, it's but if you, Woody's the girls that get it, get it. Right. Uh, right. Yes. He is very funny, so, very so funny. Yes. when you, cause I know, you know, when did you come into ghost? Cause you were on power, you know, earlier on. When did you come into ghost? I actually wasn't on power. So I, I, I wasn't but, on But power. didn't you were in a writer's room early on or? or? Not on power, no. Mm. Courtney, uh, Courtney was doing, I actually, Courtney and I go way back. Right, Courtney that's and what I, I thought. Courtney uh, and I wrote together on a show called Eli Stone and we literally wrote scripts together. Right. Ah. And we came up together. So when Courtney, I was actually with Courtney when she got the call that power was being picked up to pilot. That's what it was. Because yeah. Courtney said that on the mm. podcast. Yeah, yeah, we were having lunch. Right. So it was a trip. Mm. And then when crazy. Courtney, when Courtney that's started mystery. power, I was running the following and literally, we were on the same floor at Steiner Studios. Our offices were next to each other. Wow, that's cool. That's insane. Were you guys like, oh my God, we yeah, did it? it was, yeah, it was totally trippy. It was yeah. unbelievable. It yeah. And so when I finished Empire, Courtney was looking for someone to help her when she was expanding mm-hmm. the whole 
power universe. I right. said, sure, I'll help you run this universe. And so I joined Ghost um, as we were going into season two. Right. Mm-hmm. And because of COVID, we were still working on the finale Man, of season COVID one. That really messed us. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so when, you were, when you were writing Kane for two and a lot of three, was there... Like, did you immediately see, okay, Woody's got the comedic chops? Or was it kind of like, we're just going to write this serious ca- character and see what Woody does with it? Like, I'm. Woody does have great ad libs. Like, oh, no doubt. Yeah, I was going to no say, doubt. you know what? Majority of, his, majority of his. Right. It's, it's not written. Right. You know, his character is not, you know, it's not meant to be like comedic relief. Right. I feel like a lot of that he brings it himself. Right. Like, you have to really, really, really be on your toes yeah. when you're working. He's out. called yeah, me. Know, he's I called guess. me every white celebrity that's ever existed. <laughs> Anything. Like, he, will, he will really Brady. try to surprise you. He will try to surprise no, you. No, no, he really will. And if you are not on and your that's toes, be he his will intention. throw you off. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's I love crazy. Have, I love having scenes with Woody. Though. Yeah. yeah, I love having scenes. With you learn. You don't know what the fuck. Right. So did you kind of write it like that, or? Well, I think maybe after you know we you know he saw his albums and his albums are really bright and really funny, and then I think we kind of leaned into writing humorous lines for that some of which yeah. he'll do and some of which he'll add to yeah so it's just great but i think all of you have your different talents as, as we see you grow and progress we sort of lean into, into it. it right yeah mm-hmm. that's what i tell the fans all the time like the writers they write like geared towards like how the mm-hmm. you know what we bring to the character right yeah mm-hmm. right yeah everything they did they do it based off of what we bring right. yeah. so so we'll throw it over to monet so this season monet she's Man, dealing with she's the going loss. through a lot of Zeke Cross, the loss of Zeke Cross. And she's Ryan. dealing her with nep- not her knowing son. Right. who it is. Mm. Yeah, her nephew son. Her, her nephew son. son. Yeah. <laughs> so so she's dealing with that. So what's kind of like that first episode for her? Like when you broke for season two, like what were you like, we got to do for this premiere? Well, it was so interesting because we're seeing a different side of Monet as we start this show. It's a more vulnerable Real side. Vulnerable, yeah. And she, you know, we're used to her shaking stuff up, killing people, slapping people, right. calling people out their names. <laughs> but with this, she was grieving. Right. And so we were concerned, like, would the audience take to this different side of her? And I can remember when we filmed that scene in um, at Hofstra at the Zeke Memorial. Mm-hmm. Right. And you remember the staircase scene? Mm-hmm. And we were like, okay. And Mary said, she, you know, she needed a minute to prepare. Yeah. We're like, right. okay, all right. Yep. What's she going to do? Yep. And then she just brought it. Killed yeah. it. And brought these tears. And she kept bringing it. Yes. She and was it, in that pocket. We that yes. Really and if you remember, and then too. you entered that scene, mm-hmm. and it looked like you yourself was like taken aback yeah, like, by what mm-hmm. she was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She really yeah. balling out right now. So, she, so were, really were you kind of like, was that the intention this season, or was it, or did Mary just bring that day up? Like, did you want to open Monet up, or was it more like, wow, Mary decided that this is what she wanted to do with that moment? I think we we wanted to see, you know, we had it written in that we needed her to grieve, we because needed she was her to so feel hard guilty in the beginning of everything. about Zeke. But then I think the extent and the, the depth that she went to said, oh, we can go there can with her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know what? You know, I, I think it's really beautiful, too, is because, like, she is missing Zeke. Right. But I feel like it's something to say to her character that, like, so much of her grieving process is revenge. Yeah. Nah, because I know so nah, many missing people. Missing grief. I mean, missing um, Zeke is a whole different thing than her exactly. trying to figure out who the fuck. Yeah. Because I feel like majority, yeah, That's her grieving process becomes it. less yeah. about missing Zeke and it becomes more in, I need to we kill need the to person that out did who this. The fuck right. Yeah. And I was yeah. T- seeing what she did on the screen that day then made me feel, okay, this arc that we have for us now, just so I guess the audience will know how deep, that loss was, mm-hmm. which then, you know, she moves forward. Right. So stuff. do you think there will right. ever be a day where a man will be enough for Monet? Like where, where never. No. I, I was curious too. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it could have been, you please know, tell us, bro. It could have been Mecca, but you know, he was in four minutes. Yeah. 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 That. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. After that, it's nothing. Like, who, yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I it would have had to been ghost. It's just so hurt. <laughs> it ghost. I mean, she's so hurt, and she's been through so much. Mm-hmm. And like you were discussing, like that hard, you know, exoskeleton versus the inner softness. Mm-hmm. And I do think there's inner softness to Monet, but it's deep, deep, 
deep. Yeah. It's going, she's going to have to go through a lot more to get that. Yeah, I totally, <laughs> I totally agree. Yes. Right. Okay. So we'll head on over to Weston Holdings. Yes. Weston Holdings. Okay. Love, that's, that's one of my, like my favorite parts about season three. Like, right. Yeah. Cause was, I love Wolf of Wall Street. I, I want to give yeah. a little So Easter that egg. just tunes just like straight into the, the world of Wolf of Wall yes. Street. Yes. The Cool Grays are going crazy with the suit. Oh yeah. 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 They're and loving the Cool Grays with the suit. <laughs> Cool gray Jordans. I love the cool gray with the suit. It's oh, so fine. It was a great fit. But, Shout out to Frank. But Shout Brett was everybody. like, Brett was like, I don't know, does Brayden have the cool grays in the suit? Oh, got the cool grays. That, in the suit. Yeah, I remember that day. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I was like, oh, please. Just well, it me. wasn't the cool gray. If you remember what you first had on in that scene. Oh, I didn't have the suit on. You didn't have a suit mm-hmm. on. I had the Burberry and vest. The whole point was your characters were being oh, punished. He was going to a baby that you were going to have to wear these suits and be and walk in this corporate yeah. environment. Right. Mm-hmm. But when we got to the stage, you had on some vest and something else and something that wasn't that so we actually had to stop production and get you a suit. we did yeah they yeah. put me in a suit which i hate wearing suits everyone knows but <laughs> it, it did re- it did look really good and it and it actually made me miserable totally because i was like motherfucker so i was like walking to west but it, went with, like, Damn. it went with exactly what you right. was in right exactly miserable you right. want to be at west Holdings. you want so, to be selling drugs so we so right. we see brayden and he's at weston holdings we meet david wall and uncle lucas we obviously see Trace, who love everyone Trace. hates. Love him. Yeah, I, I love Trace. I love him. I love him. That's arguably one of my favorite oh. little sprinkles throughout this. Yes, oh my God. he is so also really funny. funny. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So so we get into that. What's up, Kiki? Looking hot as usual. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 <laughs> so we get into that, and then there's a quick moment where we're in the room with the desk uh, uh, where I was supposed to get the files um, for Kiki. And I see them do coke. And it's a brief moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm like, and they cut away. So do you think Brayden's wheels are spinning about what that could potentially be? Is, does he think he's like, I'm just going to put my head down and just work here and not involve the family? Like, like, what are your... Yeah, I think up until that point where he sees what's actually going on at Weston Holdings to some right. degree. Like, he just thinks it's a punishment. Right. And it can never work for him. It's like, this is going to be a fucked up, right. you know, year, whatever I'm going to have to spend here. Mm-hmm. But then he sees, like, a little window open. He's like, I know how I can work this. Right. Mm-hmm. Some possibilities yep. in there, you know right. what I'm saying? And then we see him introduced to Kiki Travis. Mariah. And the way he popped right oh, up. She's amazing. The best. Yeah, yeah. she's The best. Amazing. The way he okay. popped right up. What, what do you think is in store? for Brayden this year? Well, I think it's like really clear just from that scene. Like he fell in love almost immediately when he saw... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brayden and Gianni love a good black girl. <laughs> oh yeah, nah, it's, it's not just Brayden. For real though, it's DM, Gianni me. DM me immediately. Um, it's Gianni too. I don't know if Gianni Kiki too. felt the same way right. with that meeting. Yeah, so what did you think with that performance? Were you like, oh, she's not feeling Brayden or... Oh, or, she wasn't. No, not at all. I didn't think so, no. What do you think it's, it's going to take? Yeah, what do you... Proud. Yeah. Tough crowd in the way. I think old. I think uh, Braden's gonna have to prove himself, right? Mm-hmm. To I like win it. Kiki, you mm-hmm. have to prove your diligence, my boy. It right. ain't that easy, my right? Man. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then before we get to the main event, Tariq, um, <laughs> Berto, Lorenzo, oh, we love see Berto, the best, one of the great. great. I love him. Love him. We see him. You know, He's obviously, intense, we saw he the is. finale. Sure. What happened? He's dealing with that now. What do you think? is in store for for Lorenzo. Yeah, so the season theme is betrayal. Right. And the secrets that people are keeping. So Lorenzo, we know that he killed Zeke, and we know that Monet is looking for Zeke's killer. Right. Mm. So how long can he keep that secret, or what is he going to do to keep that secret? And then, of course, you guys have your secret. Effie and Brayden have their secret from... They are keeping that secret about what... Can we just say that? A lot of people forget that Brayden is in on this motherfucking secret. Oh, Brayden is because, definitely in on You know, I've been seeing a whole lot of stuff grimy. on Twitter. Effie. Both Effie everything. <laughs> no. Yeah. Effie, Effie and Brayden are keeping that secret from Tariq yes. about what happened to Lauren. But, but, I, but, but what I don't understand is why are the people mad at... Mostly Effie, not Brayden. He's like, I'm staying away from it, <laughs> even though I'm part of it. But why? Like, it's, it's power. If you wear a wire... You know the consequences. I well, think everyone just loves Paige Hurst. But you so know much. what? I've seen like when when Effie kills Lauren, everyone's like, "Oh my God, you killed Lauren!" And then when they find out she's not dead, it's like, "Oh my God, you didn't kill her." <laughs> yeah, 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 you can't Make up y'all mind. <laughs> that is a fact, though, because right. a million like terrible drug dealers. Oh, you gonna let Effie take her out? Blah blah blah. Before the job, yeah, it's out. Because like, oh. Yeah. 
And do you she think do it. <laughs> is the audience surprised? Like, are, is everyone surprised that Lauren is alive? 100%. Oh yeah, I, I mean, I don't. I think everyone thought she was dead. Mm. Also, Paige had to hide on socials that, mm. like me, I, even I the post- people that had the oh, we didn't see her body theory. Right, they right. Every time right, I see right, someone right, in public, right, right. they're like, "Oh my god, I love you, I have power." <laughs> What happened to Lauren? <laughs> like, what to, or they'll just be, eh, yo, Effie, you really kill her? <laughs> you should be like, ah. I guess. Right. Yes. yes. Right. But, but it's just a testament to how invested the people are, you know? Yeah. But uh, so with with Paige, like, she couldn't post. She was she couldn't in New shit. York. She couldn't she do anything. She had to dye her hair. She right. had to, yeah. Uh, yeah. She couldn't even show that she was in New York. It's right. tough. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. So she had to hide that she, you know, was alive the entire time. Yeah, that was a secret we really wanted to keep. Tough. Right. Yeah. So yeah. did you have that in mind from from uh, day one after it happened at the season two Yeah, finale? was there ever a world where she may have yes, absolutely, really died? Yes, absolutely. Totally. We discussed it. It was a conversation that Courtney and I had towards the end of season two. Yeah, at the end of season two, I said, wouldn't it be a great surprise if either... Um, Carrie or Lauren were actually alive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what's crazy is I remember, I don't even remember what episode we were shooting, but I just remember that it was me and Toya that plays Diana. We were in the room and Courtney came. She said, So, um, this was season two? This was season two. She was like, So, um, somebody's going to be a killer. And I was like, Ooh, (laughs) like, pick me. Like, I want to do it. (laughs) It's so funny. It's so good to be bad. Uh, Yeah. And she was like, Yeah, somebody's going to be a killer. And um, I'm not going to tell you who yet, but it's going to be somebody. Mm. We end up finding finding out who. And uh, then we end up finding out who we get, we end up finding out who's gonna die and then who's gonna kill her. Right. And it was me. Damn, that's a bomb. That's just a bomb to drop, CK. And I know. I find out that she's not. She's not. She's. Yeah. You know. So it's like roller coaster. Even so, it's not just the viewers. Like. Yeah. Also the actors. Like right. we're going yeah. through roller coaster too. Like oh my gosh, I'm gonna kill her. Oh my, right. oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. She was yeah. definitely dead for a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you revived her. Wait. How would yeah. you have? How would you have saved Carrie Milgram? I'm curious. Curious about that. Someone would have come in when. She she was hanging someone would have we were gonna i think it was i forget which maybe it was zeke was gonna come in and uh Favorite. keep her from hanging yeah. 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 oh so, so that was during season two that was, that was absolutely yeah. chilling oh my gosh shout out to jules yeah and ferg julian our writer andre ferguson another writer mm. big um, ferg big right. ferg my yes. god actually one, right. one of our one of our writers andre ferguson his brother plays two bit mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah that's fun fun absolutely <laughs> a cool little easter egg and um, two bit is still alive in the world uh, yeah do we cause and havoc will yes. we see two bit like maybe i hate this maybe. motherfucker for one thing that he does this season and i ain't gonna tell nobody <laughs> y'all gonna see when it happens <laughs> y'all gonna see <laughs> okay, okay, so obviously now Tariq, he has to, you know, still move product. He has to make money. So Noma is the He's driving force. to. Thing. Right, yeah. right. Forced to. So every season, I'm is fine it... fine with not moving money. I said, yeah. I'm fine with not having this little monster. Yep. Yeah. Right. And then look what happened after that. Right. So every season, there's a driving force. Season one of Ghost, he had to pay for Tasha's um, uh, lawyer fees. Case. Right. Yeah. Season two... It, Yaz. Right, it was Yasmin. So season three... Did you, did you want it to still be like an outside factor or? Yeah. So we were looking for what is that outside factor that's going to drive Tariq and make him make that decision right. to continue to deal drugs. Right. And Noma's that. And Noma is that. Right. Oh, she definitely is. Yeah. Because she's going to kill my ass. Exactly. Right. right. All of you. Right. She's kill all of you. Right. I just think Noma yes, has a lot. Everybody. You know, everybody feels that way. Everybody right. feels that way. Yeah. All of us. Yeah. So. Even Kane, I would, I would. I would say. Fucking Kane, bro. You I'm still him, mad at him for trying to talk him on shorty, bro. When he got hit in the mouth like that. I love that scene. I love that scene when he was like, I'm not getting down. And then he put him down and hit him with yeah. the gun. Yeah. It's like yeah. the tables have... The only scene right I hate turn. is when Kane tried to talk to my shorty. Like, I don't know. <laughs> when he tried to what? He tried to talk to my shorty. Put yes, he did. He did. he did. Totally. It wasn't yeah. even an SVR, bro. Mm-hmm. It could have been an SVR. He was a little <laughs> Range Rover HSE or whatever. And his her name was in his mouth in that scene as well. You know, I said my man, my man, my man. That's what I said. Right. Rude. Rude, if you ask me. It's rude. Yeah. So, so this season, can, can you give us whatever you can, a little preview of like what is going to be the driving force? Obviously, we know Noma. What is going to be the driving force to like 
uncover the secrets and sell drugs and keep the business alive, but also trying to stay alive. Well, I think the big thing this season that makes it different than other seasons is we have the big bad Noma. We also have another sort of big bad. But right. really, this season, what we tried to do is the big bad you're each other's big bad mm -hmm. eventually. So these secrets that you're keeping for one another, they're the things that are going to drive you and drive you against one another. To us. We to us. Right. Yep, exactly. Right. We love that. Thank we you so that. much, everyone that. coming on and recapping the episodes. Um, I'm super excited for what's to come. Uh, oh, yeah. This season is by... I mean, insane. Just, it's insane. It's insane. by far the most insane, dramatic. Most exciting. I love it. I love Most it. Right. All that. So um, we're gonna we're gonna continue recapping the episodes with you guys. We're gonna go through storylines. We're doing this for ten weeks. Ten weeks. Mm -hmm. It might not be live like this. So Alex this is like Pree, I gotta just I will cherish be here this on every right episode. now. <laughs> but we're doing this for ten weeks. Alex brought the questions. I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, Alex. If you want to take my position, <laughs> who has it? Shit, you can. I'm like, you know, anytime, any day. You know, um, maybe sometimes I feel tired. I'm like, Yo, Alex, you gotta, you gotta I'll go fill in. Just let me know. Yeah, send me the invoice. I got you. Brett, we're gonna have you back on so we can finally like. Maybe the season finale, we can kind sure. of go into everything that happened over the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's some crazy stuff that happens this season, and we just want to thank the fans for tuning in always. We have the best fan base in all of television. Literally the best fan base. stand on that. Hell yeah. Literally the best fan base, and I'm actually going to like Woo. and subscribe Absolute right now. You know what I'm so I just want to say thank you to Brett Mahoney, our yes. new well, showrunner. Um, yes. He's killing it this season. Killing thank Brett. you. Alex Lepree, Effie, and, you know, Tariq St. Patrick, the day one. We got to get her out of here. I'm nervous, bro. Why? We got, get her out. Bro. Why? We got to get her out. Get her out. Why? I'm shaking in my boots. Get her out. <laughs> get her out. I love this motherfucker. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael. Love give mother. us one right now. Listen, man. Live. The crew has it, baby. This is the first live podcast we've it. ever done. Crew has it. Give us one, two. Give us one, two. Give us one, two. Give us one, two. The crew has it. Break the gate. Brett, give us one. The crew has it. Thank you so much. It. Thank you for tuning in. We out. We out of here, baby. Absolutely. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So far. I was nervous as fuck. Wow, we killed that shit. We killed that shit.